Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show this Friday, Friday the 10th of November, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Oh, we got lots of news to cover today, lots of stuff going on out there. Uh, so it should be a pretty good show. Uh, let's take a look at this first. <clears throat> the Northern Hemisphere, the snow cover, it's reaching near a 57-year high in the amount of snow. Now, snow is very reflective. What I mean by that is sunlight comes down through to the earth, strikes the earth, and when it strikes snow, because snow's white, it doesn't absorb a lot of sunlight. It reflects the sunlight back off into space. And so the way the earth works is the more area that we have that are snow covered works toward a effect of radiating the heat back off into space. So the more area the earth is snow covered, the more we're going to be snow covered. Then the snow starts to increase. It starts to cover more areas and more heat's reflected off into space. And this too much snow cover, just saying, can cause a what's called an ice age because of all the heat it reflects back off into space. Whereas the exact opposite occurs, and these are these are processes that occur in the Earth that are very, very powerful. When snow cover recedes, it reveals the black-colored tundra, or the darker-colored Earth. That the sunlight heats up and then, release, re, re, then releases trapped gases, like methane is one of them, into the atmosphere, which are, which are very much the type of thing that retains heat in the atmosphere. So these are these are very potent things that's going on. Now this purple line on this chart here from from the national okay it's NOAA. So it's a very official chart. And it's the snow cover extent in the years nineteen sixty seven until twenty twenty three. And what we can see is this purple line is it is the amount of snow cover going up. Let's say here, 57 year high in the amount of snow cover. So that's important to know. Uh, now, is it time maybe to get a generator? And the answer might be yes. Do we remember what happened about two years ago down in Texas? People were freezing in their own homes because the power went out. They couldn't stay warm, and it was unusually cold. Well, see the orange areas? And I guess there is one state in Canada that it, in red there that's extremely high risk for the power to go out. Now I'm in the orange areas and an awful lot of you guys listening to my audience are in those orange areas as well. It ex pretty much excludes the west coast of the United States but everything on the east coast pretty much except for Florida and Georgia maybe Alabama are going to be safe from this. But all this orange area here, all of New England, all, most of the southeast, could be experiencing blackouts. And you don't know when these blackouts are going to come. And they might last for days and days. It says, warning, says half of the United States is at risk of a grid down this winter. Uh, it comes from the, uh, it says, Winter Reliability Assessment, the WRA report on the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, warns of a heightened risk of insufficient energy supply during the extremely cold spells. So it's only going only gonna to come during the really bad cold spells. You know, guys, we need some new type of energy. to add to the grid. And by gosh, they might be inventing it very soon. Uh, let's take a look at this. 
And I know you're completely unfamiliar with what you're looking at. And this thing's only about the size of a human hair. And you're looking at it through probably a microscope. But this is a tiny little circuit board that's made for a specific purpose. And this tiny little thing that you can't even see hardly can produce enough electricity to run a several pixels on a one pixel anyway on one of these but it's only tiny and the pixel if you take a look at how tiny this thing is and how and running a pixel on your television screen of continuous power just from the air how does it get the power this thing you might ask what it does is it takes moisture of the air or humidity and somehow converts it into electricity. Kind of like a solar panel takes sunlight and converts sunlight into electricity. This takes humidity and turns it into electricity. So in places like all the southeastern United States is extremely humid most of the year. This thing could be converting it into electricity. And right now, it's in, in very early phases. It's, 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 it's there. They haven't really linked them together yet. If one of these produces a very small amount of electricity, and they link them together, like make a circuit out of them, then you can, from what I understand, if you link enough of them together to be the size of a washing machine, a typical appliance in your house, these things can convert enough electricity probably to run your whole house and if you can upscaled it to that size and right now they're still working with human hair size ones you know little tiny 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 ones but it works this is the thing it's just a matter of upscaling it now at this point and doing more research so this might be an answer to part of our energy problems if they can actually develop this technology Moving on to a different subject. The leaders of Muslim countries are going to hold an emergency summit on November 12th in Riyadh. Raida, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the city name, name correctly. But this emergency summit is probably going to be all about the war that's going on right now in the Middle East. Probably. And what they're saying is, is, quote unquote, the expansion of the Gaza war is inevitable. That it's going to spread out. That's what they are saying. And they're talking about Tehran's entry into this, is, is, into this Israeli conflict, which we're very close to right now. Very, very close indeed. But, uh, Israel right now has begun to have these four hour a day pauses in their fighting. So what they're doing basically is they're giving people a chance during this four hour period to maybe just walk out of the area without getting bombed and make their way into southern Gaza where there's relief efforts going on and so there's a four hour pause here and I think this is a good move in this war in the fighting it allows people to escape I'll tell you if, if I was one of these people in that city in the north during that four hour period I would be booting it on out of there getting south as fast as I can uh, the United States has is striking uh, another Syrian facility. It says linked to Iran-backed militias. So they're in there doing more bombing and stuff. The United States launched an airstrike on a facility in eastern Syria linked to Iranian-backed militias in retaliation for what has been a growing number of attacks on bases housing U.S. troops in the region for the past several weeks, the Pentagon says. The strike was ha carried out by two U.S. F-15 fighter jets, uh, and it's it was on a weapons storage facility linked to Iran's Revolutionary Guard. So that's what's going on there with that. 
Now, this was really funny. I got a real kick out of this video. It's called North Korean Propaganda Shows How Americans Supposedly Live. And this is awesomely funny. It's really, really funny. <laughs> I'm going to put a link in the description. You guys want a little chuckle? Have a little laugh? Watch this because the people in North Korea watch this. This is what they watch. And this is what they believe that people in North America live like. We know it's propaganda, but they don't. They're serious. They believe that this is actually how we live. And watching it from those eyes or that perspective, when you watch this, you will get a hilarious chuckle out of it. I almost guarantee it because I did this morning when I watched it. So I'm going to put a link in the description to this North Korean propaganda. Now there's a voice dub over in this. The real commentator is comment commenting on on what the video is the real commentator and and he's speaking in north korea of course we don't understand that so they've dubbed it over with what he's saying they've translated it for us into english <laughs> it's very funny okay let's take a look at the markets now silver price 2233 it's down 28 cents on the day so far for no apparent reason other than they are creating paper silver on a printing press and that's what they're selling and they can create as much of it as they want ultimately <laughs> and so it makes it look like there's an oversupply of silver when the real physical silver is in short supply but if we're pricing it according to short supply the real physical the price would be a lot higher because of supply and demand and so they can actually run out of the real physical and still have heaps and heaps of this paper that they're trading. It, uh, it's, a, it's a derivative. It's, the pricing is all, all works on a derivative, derivatives mechanism. Gold today. Gold's down today. $18.90. It's at $1,939 on the day so far. Now, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's been on a run lately. Uh, it's at 37372 and it's heading toward 40000 We got Ethereum at $2,100, and we've got XRP running at $0.65.2. Cents. So XRP come down just a little bit. It was getting up near $0.70. Cents. Taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 34,034. It's up 142 points on the day so far. Taking a look at crude oil today, it's up a dollar eleven at 76.85 today for crude oil. Bonds and rates today, uh, we're looking at the U.S. 30-year is down five basis points at 4.7. And the U.S. 10-year is at 4.59, and it's down 3.4 3 basis points. And the dollar index today is at 105.94 today. And the dollar's going along sideways. It's starting to go up just a little bit this afternoon. But it's not much. It's mostly sideways. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Really appreciate my audience out there. You guys have a great afternoon. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do a show this Sunday. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Catch you guys on uh, Monday. If not, I'm going to be here Monday. We and you guys have a great afternoon and have a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>